So what do you do if you've determined that you do have a parasite or several parasites? You need to remove the cause. So the cause in this case are the foods that are feeding the parasites. So number one, you wanna remove all refined sugars. That doesn't just mean your donuts, your bagels, and your cupcakes. That also means condiments, salad dressings, flour tortillas, like any type of refined sugars, even in oatmeal. Things that are just hidden that we don't think of on a daily basis, you want to remove that from your diet. Number two, avoid 95% of natural sugars, including fruits, honey, maple syrup, agave, dates. All of these things, again, feed parasites and you wanna get rid of them from your diet at least during the cleanse. Avoid starches like rice, any type of starches, even sweet potatoes and regular potatoes, get rid of them from your diet. You're gonna be eating more things like squash that are in season and maybe a little bit of whole grains. And I'll talk about that in the next section. Next, avoid processed foods. So this is where a lot of people get caught up because we love our processed foods. Not just North America, but just people in general very much so rely on processed foods. I'm talking about like getting up in the morning eating cereal and starting your day with a protein shake, you know, protein powders, very processed thing. You do not want to be eating granola bars. You don't want to be eating snack bars. Anything that comes in a package that you have not physically taken out of its whole form and made something out of in a pot, you don't want to eat that. It's going to disrupt the process of ridding your body of parasites and intestinal worms. Next, avoid all dairy. And lastly, avoid meats, unhealthy fats, and unhealthy oils. Okay, this is the fun part. So now we're gonna start to add things, right? We can't just get rid of all that stuff and not add things, right? So you wanna add bitter greens, things like dandelion greens, watercress, kale, collard greens, and even bitter melon. Bitter melon is an absolutely amazing vegetable. You probably never heard of it, but it is native to Asia and, and different parts of India. And it's extremely bitter, but this will absolutely destroy parasites. <laughs> it's very bitter. So you can find that in like an Asian market, your local Indian or Asian market. And it looks very much like this ribbed green cucumber. That's the closest thing I could say. It's kind of pointy at the ends. Sometimes it curls, but very, very good for ridding your body of parasites. Number two, eat fruits that are anti-parasitic, things like papaya and pineapple. And if you can stomach eating the papaya seeds with the papaya, absolutely amazing. For oils, when you're cooking, you wanna only use coconut oil because coconut oil is antimicrobial, so that means it's gonna be fostering the good bacteria within your stomach and it's not going to be feeding bad bacteria like unhealthy fats would. So you wanna use that because again, it's antimicrobial and it's antiparasitic. Digestive spices. We wanna include some delicious spices, right? Because obviously you're still a human, you wanna enjoy your food. So now it's not about necessarily using the goy the sazon and all those things that maybe you've previously been using to season your food. Now it's about seasoning with intention, right? So I want you to think of things like turmeric, ginger, fennel, seeds, cumin seeds or cumin powder, black pepper, cinnamon, clove. All of these spices are meant to help your digestive system to assimilate the food that it's breaking down and help your body to actually absorb those nutrients. So basically it just helps things to move through faster. Oh, additionally, mustard seeds and cayenne pepper are also really good for digesting food. So include those in your cooking as well. You wanna lessen the amount of regular onions that you're eating and more so do garlic and green onions because that is going to help the parasites to be eradicated from your system. Things like cilantro and apple cider vinegar also really good for this cleanse. Last but not least, grains. So you wanna do small amounts of grains in your meal. So you wanna do mostly greens and a small amount of grains. And the kind of grains that you can have are whole grains such as quinoa, barley, millet, amaranth, but you wanna make sure you're not eating more than a handful. And last but not least, I just wanna go through some general tips on how you should think about this cleanse and how you should approach your lifestyle during this time. You wanna make sure you're eating for nourishment, not for pleasure. Of course, we're human beings. We wanna enjoy the food that we're consuming. However, it's really important that you think about what your body is actually receiving from every single food that you put into your body. Make sure you're eating whole organic 
foods. If you can't find organic foods or for some reason you feel like you can't afford organic foods, then go local. You can go to a local farmer's market. You can go to CSAs where literally just look up on localharvest.org and they're gonna give you tons of local CSAs that will allow you to find a local farmer that's selling produce at a really discounted rate in boxes. And you can get a box of fresh fruits and vegetables every single week for really, really great price, usually a lot cheaper than the grocery store. Next, avoid nightshades. So things like tomatoes and bell peppers, as well as eggplant, these are things that are going to feed the parasites. So you wanna avoid this during the time of the cleanse. So you also wanna make sure you're eating your meals at the same time every day. So one of the biggest things with digestive illnesses or anything that's disrupting the balance of your digestive system is irregular eating patterns. You don't want to eat today at 9 a.m. and then tomorrow at 11 a.m. You want to be eating at the same time. So try to put yourself on a routine so you know every morning you're eating maybe at 8 or 9 and then for lunch you're eating at 12 or 1 and then for dinner you're eating at like 5 or 6 and that's it. You don't want to be snacking. Snacking, by the way, disrupts the digestive process because usually it takes us anywhere from 3 to 5 hours to digest a plant-based meal and if we're eating meat, it can take us up to 24 to 48 hours depending on what type of meat. So if you put food on your stomach while it's already digesting the last meal, that again is giving you the chance to create ama that will build up toxins in your body. Don't skip meals and don't eat past 7 p.m. And that means make sure you go to bed by 10 or 11. That's one of those things that is really important because if you don't go to bed by 10 or 11, what do you wanna do when it comes to be 11.30 or 12? You wanna eat, you wanna snack. In the case that you are up at that point, you know, cause I, I know it's realistic that you may still be up at those times, you wanna eat things that are very light. So maybe papaya or pineapple, or you can eat a little bit of greens. You can even just eat a half of an avocado. That's healthy fats, right? If you are up late, those are the type of things that you would wanna eat instead of eating processed foods. Also, if you are gonna be eating meat on this cleanse, which I highly want you to avoid, but if that's something that you feel that is very important for you and you feel like that's just, that's what it is, if you're just not over meat at this point in your life, that's fine. Make sure you're eating grass-fed meat and also make sure that you're cooking it very well and you're cleaning it very well. You do not wanna be eating out during this time because you can't know for a fact that the meat is gonna be well cooked you can't know for a fact if it's organic or grass-fed, even if they say, you just never know. And you also don't know how it's being handled, right? You don't know what the food practices are. You just have to trust it. So if you are going to be eating meat during this cleanse, I highly recommend you make it yourself and you make sure it's grass-fed and well-cooked. Last but not least, during this cleanse, you wanna avoid all cold beverages and all cold foods. Do not do any raw foods. Everything must be cooked and well-oiled with coconut oil or ghee. If you do consume dairy, which I don't recommend you consume, consuming dairy during this cleanse, but some people do consume ghee, which is fine. Also make sure that you're drinking lots of warm lemon water or lime water. So that will again balance out the pH of the stomach and help to move everything through. 